sounds a little funky when I explain it like that, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so for I get so recall just this, I'm going to have so we have S X minus one plus Y is equal to one over S squared plus one. And then we have x in here, we're going to plug in sy. So then we get s times sy minus 1 plus y is equal to 1 over s squared plus 1. And this is going to become quite interesting. Ooh. S squared plus 1 times y is equal to y or uh, 1 over s squared plus 1 plus 1. Right? So bring the 1 over. And then we get s squared y plus y. So then we can factor the y out. That so far. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we get y is equal to 1 over s squared plus 1 squared plus 1 over s squared plus 1. And so recall that x is equal to s times y. So then what we do for x is we just multiply everything by s. Now we need to find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1 squared. Now this is where things get a little bit complicated because it's not a very easy function to deal with when it comes to factoring and things like that. Uh, so to factor it, what we're going to do is we're going to have 1 over uh, s squared plus 1, so, uh, all squared to a over s squared plus 1 plus b over s squared plus 1 squared. No. Now for 1 over s squared plus 1 squared, uh, you can likely look that up in a table that you will be given for tests. Uh, that is going to give you one half times sine of t minus t cos t. Now, I know that I didn't go through to actually solve it, but to go through and solve it would take significantly longer than I have time available right now to give. So, for the time being, that is the answer. So for y anyway, y of t is equal to sine of t plus one half sine of t minus t cos of t, which could further be simplified as three over two sine of t minus t over two
Now for x, we have uh, so this is going to yield us cos of x or cos of t. Sorry. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. As for this one here, we can use a little principle. And I'm just going to jog my memory, make sure that I'm not saying anything that's incorrect. What it's going to yield is it's going to yield 1 over 2 t sine t. And the way that we go through to find that is we take, uh, so if you look, and say we're, we were to multiply this by a over a, right? Now this looks very, very, very familiar. so far. So now what we're going to do is we're going to determine what a is, which is negative 2 because of the, uh, the way that numbers play out. So this is going to become negative 2 over negative 2. We're going to use this here to get t times the derivative of this. So we're going to have negative 1 half of the inverse of So our answer here is going to be minus 1 minus t over 2 sine of t. And that is our x. And that is how you solve systems of differential equations using Laplace transforms. And now for the last question, we're going to get into the final value theorem, which is where if a function as it approaches infinity converges at a finite point, you'll be able to actually use Laplace transforms to approximate that point instead of using conventional limits, which sometimes can get a little bit messy. So for that, so let me erase the board real quick. So the equation for that 